Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Luke Milliron from the UC Cooperative Extension. So I wanted to talk with you about uh, walnut rootstocks. All right, there's a lot of varieties out there, and as we try to try to get some better rootstocks out there for growers and more options, what, what do we see coming out the pipeline? Absolutely. So our main message from Cooperative Extension is whether we're talking about rootstocks for any of the, the crops we grow, or we're talking about the variety on top, we want the grower to be making an active decision. Not just do what your dad did, not just do what your last orchard was, but really make, you know, do your own research. Don't just listen to the nurserymen, although they're a great source of information, but do your own research and, and look at, at what potential options are out there. And the standard has kind of been paradox seedling here for so many years in the walnut industry, but paradox seedling in, in all of our new trials is you walk, you just, you don't even need any data. You just walk down the, down, down the orchard row and you can see the paradox seedling trees because they're just riddled with crown gall. And that's why this clonal propagation, these clonal paradox rootstocks like Flatch, VX211, RX1, just almost have no crown gall in comparison. And so a lot of research being done by UC, USDA, and others has been really great in showing that uh, these clonal rootstocks are, are really advantageous, not only from a crown gall perspective, they all have way less crown gall, but VX211 rootstock um, was selected because of its tolerance against root lesion nematode, which is a big issue in, in walnut production. And then RX1 rootstock um, it was selected because um, of its resistance to some Phytophthora species. So obviously another issue there. And then Grizzly has kind of been the newest uh, rootstock on the block um, from, uh, from a, a farmer and a nurseryman uh, came out with that. And that's in a couple UC trials, but it's, um, it's looking good so far, but we don't have much data on it uh, compared to the others. And then we have a whole nother generation uh, of rootstocks uh, being evaluated, but we're not quite ready to talk about those yet. Right. So the ones that you did mention, though, are they all uh, readily available, including, you said, grizzly? They are readily available. My understanding is that um, grizzly can be difficult to propagate, so it might be a little bit more difficult uh, for a grower to get their hands on. Um, but some nurseries have even gone away from uh, from producing paradox seedling entirely, saying we're just going to go with the clonals. And so, um, Vlach is a is a high vigor rootstock. It looks good, but um, again, VX211 with that nematode advantage and being a good replant rootstock. Um, if you have a replant situation, you need to put a tree in. It's vigorous. Um, that root lesion tolerance is great. And then I really like the, the rootstock RX1 um, with that resistance to some Phytophthora species is huge. So excited for these rootstocks and excited for, for the ones to come. Awesome. Well, we certainly appreciate all the trials and, and work that you guys do. We understand it takes time and, and growers know what difficulties they face in the field as far as uh, you know disease pressures and such. So based on the recommendations and, and, and uh, characteristics of these rootstocks you talked about, they should be able to get a good idea of what's going to be good for them and their uh, management practices. So thank you, Luke, and read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.